know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. The power of consistently seeking God. The power of consistently seeking God. Jeremiah 29 verse number 13. It says, and you seek me and find me. When? When you search for me. Somebody say search. Search what is the voice of God saying for this season. Search. You will find me when you seek me. Right? When you search for me. That search there talks of desperation. If you lose your keys, if you misplace your keys in your house, you don't stop searching for them until you find them. Question. Why do you seek for God and then stop in the middle? Why do you seek God and then you are disturbed by a phone call? He says search. Now that word search is not just a once off search. You, it's because you see the, the things of God are inexhaustible. So we continue to search. What are we searching for? We are searching for the voice of God in that season. There is a voice for the season. Pay attention. There is a what? A voice for the season. Church, if you miss out what God is doing in this season, you have missed your destiny. I'm telling you. So you will find him when you do what? When you search for him. Search for him how? With the whole of your heart. With the whole of your heart. Somebody say, I will search for God with the whole of my heart. Somebody say, spiritual search. Did you get that term? So you look at your life and you are seeing that there are gaps and holes in your life. So what do you do? You go on a spiritual search looking for answers to fill up those holes. You need what is called a spiritual project. God, I know there are things you want to do for me, but I'm not ready for them. So I search what do I need to do to be ready for what God wants to do in my life. Because remember, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered the hearts of men, the things that God has prepared. The things are prepared already. It's just you who's not ready. The blessings are prepared, but are you ready? So when I pray and I seek God, the prayer does two things. One, it changes me and it changes the situation. So real prayer changes me and changes my situation. Because sometimes it's not the situation that needs to change. It's you who needs to change so you qualify for whatever it is that you're asking for from God. Remember, things come to you by virtue of the changes that are happening in your life. Breakthroughs are a byproduct of who I am becoming in the realm of the spirit. So the more I grow spiritually, the more I attract physically. Be it breakthroughs, changes, marriage. I'll prove to you that prayer does not only change your situation, but it changes you. G give me Luke chapter number 9, verse 29. This is Jesus speaking here. Look at this. He says, as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered. Sometimes you are not getting breakthroughs because of your face. It means that there was something wrong with Jesus' face. Uh, why alter it if it was perfect? So if Jesus needed his face altered, how about you? Esther 2.15, what does it say? Esther had favor with everyone who saw her. Why? She was in his presence. Her face was altered. Are you ugly in the realm of the spirit? Instead of being offended at me, you need to pray, God, alter my appearance. I'm buttressing the point that prayer does not just change your situation, it can also change you. You see, when someone wants to bewitch you properly, they deal with your face, your countenance. So that wherever you go, face you are going to bow around. And even if they wanted to do something for you, there's just something about your nose that bothers them. This tells me that prayer is more powerful than all that makeup. If you don't believe your face needs to be altered, why do you put on makeup? Just go like that. The problem is you are trying to alter it physically and you have not altered it spiritually. So in God's presence, my countenance is changed. And look at this. And as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered. Heaven altered the appearance of Jesus' face. I said to God, God, you've got to echo this thing, you know, with another scripture. He says, Moses, 
he was he had a divine encounter burning bush experience right also moses went up to meet god prayer when he came down from the mountain what had happened to his face his face was shining it's not about bleaching it's about changing the appearance of your face physically in the realm of the spirit you have bleached enough now you need to change the appearance of your face in the realm of the spirit people relate to you because of how they see you so if all the men are avoiding you you need to go to the secret place holy spirit alter my appearance so your customers can want to do things for you but the problem is the appearance of your face so when i consistently pray i get to a place where god has altered my face in the realm of the spirit and i become handsome in the realm of the spirit when you are consistently in god's presence You've got to be very, very careful because you become attractive. I'll prove it to you. Joseph, how many believe that God was with Joseph? Potiphar's wife was now on his case. She was ignoring the general and after the small boy. Why? Countenance, handsome badge. Why? Presence. That's why the anointing needs to go with character. Otherwise, you'll finish all the women. Why do people go to Gezwa? What are they watching? They are trying to alter face. And his robes became glistening. There are times when people will say to me, man of God, there was an all night or several all nights when I was sitting at the back and I was looking at you and it's like your, your clothes were shimmery. I understand it. This is your garments glistening, shining. Why? Presence of God. Never go onto the marketplace without going into his presence first. Where are you going? Because on the market you meet Pharaoh. So, for you to win on the marketplace where you meet Pharaoh, there has to be consistency in the place of prayer and the place of seeking God. So, when I'm consistently in the presence of God, I change the countenance of my face. Then I change also my spiritual atmosphere. You move around with an atmosphere. You move around with an atmosphere. There are people who move around with an atmosphere of poverty. So wherever they go, poverty follows. Anything that happens in their life is poverty related. Be it an accident, it's poverty related. It wants to set you back. Be it a transaction is denied, it's poverty related. It wants to set you back. Even the swipe machine is working for everyone. But when it comes to you, you have come there with your presence. The swipe machine says, why? Because those things, those goods are being sold at a discount. Let them increase the price. It will go through. You carry an atmosphere. The place of prayer is a place where I go to do spiritual negotiations. Deals are negotiated first in the realm of the spirit before the natural. So if you don't secure the contract in the realm of the spirit, even if you are being promised in the natural, you'll never get it. So prayer is a place where I go and seek God so as to secure my transactions in the natural. But I secure them spiritually. A boy is dating you three years and is dating unto marriage. Last minute, he changes his mind when they are preparing to go in and marry and pay Lobola. Why? You didn't secure that relationship in the realm of the spirit. So, prayer and seeking God is how we secure our lives in the realm of the spirit. That's Jacob, Genesis 32, 29 and 30. He says, I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. So, you preserve transactions you are discussing in the realm of the spirit. So, you are busy running around on the market during the day, but at night you must preserve those transactions in his presence. It's not enough to be married. You must preserve that relationship in prayer because there are other people who are outside who are trying to get in. And the enemy wants to pull you out of marriage. You begin to meditate on the possibilities of singlehood. You think your life would be better if you are single. You look at your partner and say, and you begin to quote scripture. You begin to call your spouse Lord. If I preach a message on Lord, you begin to look at your spouse and say, I think if I get rid of this one. Why? You have not preserved it in the realm of the spirit. Pregnancies are preserved in the realm of the spirit. You don't just get pregnant and you relax. No. Especially if you have not had a baby for a long time. And then you get pregnant. You think the enemy will stop? You won't stop. You've got to preserve this is through consistent prayer. Consistently seeking God. You preserve the things that God has promised you. Never trust a transaction until you secure it spiritually. The birth of a child, marriage, wedding, business transactions, those things must be secured in the realm of the spirit. If you don't secure those things in the realm of the spirit, you will have a plethora of disappointments. Taposa tapinda. How many Tapota Tapindas have you had in your life? You can write a book called Tapota Tapinda. You, 
because you didn't understand what I'm sharing with you here. So many times people, they hear prophetic word, they relax. No. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, prophecy. To prosper you, not to harm you, future and hope. Then you will pray. Then you will seek. Hello? You need to move from the place of prayer to the place of seeking. I'm not saying don't pray. Praying is talking to God. And you make your request known, Philippians 4. This one. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So you make your request known. You see? But my prayer life cannot just be about making requests known. I move from prayer now to seeking. After I've given God the whole list, that should only take you maybe 10, 15 minutes. And then for the next two hours, you are seeking his face. And then after God is convinced, then he goes to that list and begins to tick the things off one by one. He begins to do them one by one. So it's important that you move from the place of just praying and prayer points to a place of seeking. Also, don't be anxious. Anxiety robs you of your breakthrough. So, you pray and seek God until you have peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Until you have peace, the prayer will not be answered. I've seen God does not answer prayers while you're still panicking. Consistent prayer. Right? Let's talk about consistency. How consistent are you? A real attack upon your life is an attack on your prayer life. The devil attacks your prayer life before he attacks everything else in your life. The devil can have a two-year plan, strategic plan, to kill your prayer life systematically. When he kills your prayer life, then now he has access to everything that you have because you are defenseless. To be prayerless is to be defenseless. Because it's being godless. Prayerlessness is godless and you are defenseless. So, it's so important that you are a person of consistent prayer. There are too many emotional Christians that pray or seek God when they feel like it. What about when you don't feel like it? The devil never goes on holiday. So, men must pray consistently. Luke 18 verse number 1. Look at this. The Bible says, Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always, say that word with me, always to pray. Notice he didn't say pastors ought always to pray. He didn't say those who are in intercession. He didn't say those who are prayer warriors. He didn't say except business people because they are busy. He said men. As long as you are part of men, you ought always to pray. Men is talking about humanity. So he's talking about you. He says you ought to always pray. You. Jesus came down to earth and he looked at our lives. He looked and he saw so much trouble. He said, ah, hey, it's better in heaven. This, ah, this thing I'm seeing, men, you ought always to pray. Right now in this season, here of lockdown in courts, do you know what Tiva Naruku Famba say? There are some people who transported themselves from the urban area and they said, in this season, I want to be Kuruseva. And they are traveling for you consistently. So now they easily just have access to go and consult about you who is now prayerless because it's cold. Is this your first winter? Men ought always to pray. Watch this. Follow the teaching. Men ought always to pray and not lose heart. In other words, even if I'm not seeing the result, I continue to pray. Because the negotiations are not finished in the realm of the spirit. Some deals, they can be negotiated in a day. Some deals, they take three months to be negotiated. The bigger the deal, the longer the negotiations. So prayer is a system of negotiations in the realm of the spirit. So I negotiate for my future. I negotiate for my security. I negotiate for the stability of my marriage. Prayer is a place of stability. You bring stability to your life by prayer. A prayerless person is unstable. Up to date, down tomorrow. Prayer goes where I can't go. I'll prove it to you. Give me the next verse. Then Jesus was saying, in a certain city, a judge. Somebody say a judge. There's what is called the spiritual court of law. There was a judge who did not fear God, nor regard men. Hello? Is this not like a picture of African leaders? I'm just saying. There was, in a certain city, a judge who did not fear God, nor regard men. Hello? right then he paints the contrast give me the next verse now there was a widow helpless defenseless right in that city and she came to him saying get justice for me from my adversary remember that guy does not care about people and he doesn't understand prayer points go back to verse one what was the teaching men ought always to so then he tells us about this wicked judge and about this innocent woman give me the next verse go back to verse three and now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying get justice for me from my adversary give me the next verse and he would not for a while he didn't care about the situation for a while this way he would not for a while but afterwards he said within himself prayer will make people who are unjust talk to themselves about themselves 
prayer goes where you can't go. This woman did not have the phone number of that judge. Your prayer has got everyone's phone number. Your prayer goes into the boardroom and negotiate on your behalf while you are not there. And in the morning, men come and say, we have made decisions in your favor. You didn't make any decisions. It's my prayer that came to your house on a hill and started talking to you. When you have no access to kings, you have access to God who has access to kings through your prayer, through your seeking God. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard men. Why was he talking about God? Because there's something God was doing to him. But he was so stubborn, he said, God, okay. So your prayer makes God visit unfair people. This scripture tells me there was a discussion between the judge and God. So God begins to speak on your behalf while you are not there. The problem is you are trying to phone everyone. You have left 11 missed calls with your customer. What are you doing? Now you are annoying them. He says, though I do not fear God, nor regard men. Give me the next verse. Yet because this woman troubles me, how did she trouble him? She troubled him in prayer. So your prayer troubles people who are not just. Because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. This is where the secret is. Because of her what? Not once a week. Her continual coming. You are lacking consistency. Her continual coming. She weary me. So there's a system in the realm of the spirit where you can weary, wear down. Not by phoning them. So what you do on this carpet here, where is kings, judges? They are tired of saying no. You can get them to be tired by consistent prayer. Lest she worries me. Give me the next verse. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Hear. There's a lesson in what he said. He is saying, I'm tired of these prayer people. Because your prayer causes heaven to arise and go and deal with him. I'm telling you a system whereby you can get decisions made in your favor in the kingdom. Give me the next verse. And, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out, how often? Day and night. Consistency cry out. That's prayer. So he's telling you that this whole parable was about prayer. It started with prayer. Verse 1. Men ought always to pray. It ended with prayer. So all of that is God showing you what happens in the realm of the spirit. You can change things. You can shift things by prayer in the realm of the spirit. Hebrews eleven six. 6. I love that scripture. The Bible says if without faith it is what? Impossible to please God. For he who comes to God, he must believe. That's faith. Listen. And he must believe that he is a what? A rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Consistency. Not seeking when you feel like. Not seeking when your problems. Diligence. You need what is called spiritual diligence. You give diligently. You pray diligently. You fast diligently. Give me Second Chronicles 26. So once you start skipping days of prayer, you know you're in trouble. Remember in the days of Daniel, what did those magicians say? They said to the king, we want you to shut down prayer for 30 days. All the devil needs is consistent prayerlessness for a period in your life. Then he deals with you. Can you imagine they went to parliament to say stop prayer? That means that there's more power in praying than what you see. It was doing something to them. Remember, many kings, they report to the kingdom of darkness. That's why they make anti-welfare decisions. They are not their own decisions. They are decisions from satanic altars executed by men representing the devil. So when we pray now, and just judges, they change their mind in your favor. He's talking about Uzziah here. You were 16 years old when you became king. Look at what happened. He did what? He sought God in the days of Zachariah. Who did he seek? Not the man of God. Who did he seek? He didn't find the pastor and bother him. Who did he seek? He sought God. This is before the veil was torn in the temple. He had the revelation that I can go direct to God. This was a king. He was busy, but he sought God. He had money, but he sought God. He had cars, but he sought God. He had estates, not houses. Estates, but he sought God. Hello? He sought God in the days of Zechariah. He's just telling us who the prophet was, right? Who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as consistency, he sought God. What happened? God made him to prosper. So God can't make you prosper without you consistently seeking him. Simple. I love verse 15. 
Who made him prosper? Can I tell you what the scripture didn't say? The scripture did not say he sought prosperity. This is where you have a problem. You are seeking for prosperity. You are not seeking God. That needs to change. And then you are trying to use God to get what you want. God is saying, you want to use me? I'm cleverer than that. He sought God. Look at this. Look at what happened because he sought God. And he made devices, innovation in Jerusalem, invented by skillful men. God gave you men. When I see God, God gives me men. He says, I'll give you men for your life. Hello? Men I gift from God to you. God can give you a gift of men. Loyal men, reliable men, skillful men. I want to buy trucks, but I don't want drivers that would drive the cars into ditches. God, give me reliable drivers that don't drink. He was given skillful men. Hello? To be on the towers and corners. To shoot arrows and large stones. So his fame spread abroad. All from seeking God. Far and wide. Why? For he was marvelously helped. Heaven only helps those who seek God. So things happen to people. They say, where was God? God is saying, where were you? I have not seen you for a while. This way, where, God, where are you business? Is proof you are not seeking him. Because if I'm seeking God, I'm walking with him. I don't have to ask, where are you? He's right there. Hello? Things don't just happen. The devil makes sure you become prayerless so you can gain access. Lift up your right hand. Say, I refuse for the devil to have access to my life. Because of prayerlessness. My Father, my God, help me. Grant me the grace to be consistent. Acts 12, verse 5 and verse 7. The early church was consistent. Peter was therefore kept in prison. Say kept in prison. You have been kept on the same level. The devil has kept you on the same level. Where has the devil kept you? Let me give you the antidote to stagnation. It's right there. Peter was kept in prison, but constant prayer. Persistent. Consistent. Prayer was offered to God for him by the church. What happened? Give me verse 6. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping. Bring him out to kill him, not out of prison. They were beheading them. He was being brought out to be killed. They were after Peter, James, and John. He was about to bring him out, right? That's to kill him. That night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains. Somebody say two chains. Between two soldiers, say two soldiers. So it doesn't matter how many of the enemy are around you. Can you imagine? Two soldiers one person chains i thought chaining me was enough chained in other words the soldiers were inside his prison cell the door was closed chains on him two chains plus two soldiers right and the guards before the door were keeping the prison picture this inside the cell two soldiers on you two chains by the door two guards where are you going Hello? Hello? But look at the power of consistent prayer. Give me a verse. Now, behold, an angel of the Lord. So, consistent prayer activates angelic activity. It says, an angel of the Lord, one angel, stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, divine presence. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up. Prayer raises you up. Saying, arise quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. The chains will fall off by themselves. that the grass withers and the flower fades but your word is eternal breaking the chains unlocking your destiny